Welcome adventurers. Today we're going to turn all this into these. But before we get into that, I'd like to take a moment to thank all my patrons. Uh, no one, John Doe, obvious into you, and no, nobody, maybe you, not you, J&J &J Doe. Yeah, well, if you haven't got it by now, that I, I don't have any patrons yet. But if you'd like to be one, the link's in the episode description. So feel free to stop on by. Well, first thing I want to do is make a template, and this template is for stairs. If you want to see a more in-depth video on this, please go see Cult of Crafting's video on it. It's great. That's where I got mine. But basically, you lay out a square, you lay out a grid on that square, and you cut out that grid to create these. You just transfer it onto the piece that you want, and you have a very good run and riser set for stairs. I wanted to have cladding on the outside, so I took another equally widthed piece, which is three quarters of an inch in this case, trimmed it to the same length with the angles at the top and the bottom, and then I glue my stair risers to the inside of the cladding, and it's pretty much it. It's not a terribly complicated process. Uh, I think it took me all of like know, 10 or 15 minutes. And of course I'm using medium density chipboard. Now on the top section I did leave it a little long because of the cap step. I wanted to be recessed between the rails as well, which this is the cap step. And I made it the same width there just by measuring. So the length I left long on the side was about three mils, which is about the width of this medium density chipboard. These stairs are uh, one inch deep by two inches long and just some tacky glue into where they set and piece it all together. It was really simple and very satisfying to make these stairs. Uh, I definitely will be utilizing that template more in the future. And the lovely thing about it is you can use it to make stairs of uh, seemingly infinite height. These are three and a half inches tall by four inches deep. So that's the pattern there. Well, about three and a half inches by three and a half inches, I guess, is more accurate. Um, but if I build everything to those specifications, I can reproduce it infinitely. Here I cut a three and a half inch tall times two piece of chipboard, three quarter inch wide, and then a two inch piece to go along the bottom. And I wanted some cross supports to keep, to reinforce it and also to give it some visual interest. And so I cut a piece. This was a half inch wide. I traced out the dimensions on it just by putting it next to the frame and then of course copied those trimmed dimensions to a new piece so I could reproduce it again. Then I had two pieces and again tacky glue to stick it into place and I crossed them in an alternate pattern so one side is turned one way and the other is turned the opposite so that they create an X like so. Now the stairs are fundamentally done, we'll set them to dry. Since this is catwalks, we want some support struts, some, some beams, some columns that they sit on. So basically, using those same dimensions, three and a half inch by two inch, I super glue several pieces together. I initially tried the tacky glue, but didn't like how easily it wobbled and whatnot while it was drying and I was worried that it was going to dry into awkward positions so I just used a dab of super glue and so the two inch pieces are glued to the interior edges of the three and a half inch long pieces so that way they're all consistently withed obviously you can make these dimensions whatever you want this is just for the purpose of explaining this video obviously if you wanted to have step ups that went higher you could make them taller twice as tall, three times as tall, use whatever dimensions you like, uh, but you end up with this. And once you have several of those, you want some cross supports in there as well. And these I wanted to recess to make it look a little more interesting, more like cross girders, like you'd see on an actual bridge or construction, you know, scaffolding or something. So I create my initial one, uh, uh, reproduce and replicate all at the same time, apparently. Uh, the pattern onto other pieces of half inch wide cardstock, but ultimately it'll fit in just like that. A little dab of super glue, 
and then put the other one in the opposite direction. Another couple of dabs of super glue. And now we want to make sure they stand up. I wanted to have some industrial looking like feet type supports. And since these are three quarters wide, the pieces of chipboard, I decided to make the feet one and a half inches wide. That way I could have a half inch sticking out on either side. And to make sure I align them properly, I went in a half inch from each side. So that way I could then uh, mark it, cut them, as you will see here, and then bevel the edges. Well, not the edges, but cut off a corner. This is what I'm doing here is marking where I want to cut. My hand wasn't in the way. It'd probably be a little more interesting. There you cut the little corner triangles off because apparently all the corners have to be not 90 degrees in sci-fi. And just like that with my alignment lines, I can glue it into place. So I do that for all of my support struts. Now I wanted to add a little bit on top. So using the same two inch interior dimensions, uh, I actually measured them a little bit longer because I measured it to the frame they're sitting on and cut out some side brackets so that the pieces wouldn't slide off the actual tracks that I put in there. And so I measure here and two inches is almost perfect. Gives a little bit of play so it's not tight, but also uh, not too loose either. So I just measure some two inch widths and this order of chipboard actually came out to be exactly 12 inches wide by 10 inches. So I got five. This is anti-slip matting. I got a roll of it for $1.25 at the dollar store. I thought it would be great for camouflage netting in some instances as well as to make tracks like uh, other meshes used for like granny grating or drywalls mesh tape. But in this case, it's uh, got a different pattern and texture to it. It's not so grid-like. It's more like a anti-fatigue mat you might see in a restaurant or any place where people are expected to stand for long periods of time. Because it's porous and soft, it actually glues very easily. And so you trim off the excess and Bob Jernkel. Now here I wanted to give some reinforcing struts and some visual detail so these catwalks were just almost two-dimensional and so that's what these are and when it's all said and done this is what you end up with a bunch of catwalks stairs struts even a hexagonal crossbeam of course remember to like share and subscribe if you're enjoying the videos and if you really want to support me one of the best ways to do that is through patreon now we're gonna do some painting uh, off camera, I actually take that one right there and put a cross beam in it because I wanted it to be a little more rigid. Here, black paint and Mod Podge, like normal, seals the cardstock, glues all the little rivets in place, which are just beads. Nothing too exciting there. Uh, some masking fluid after I prime the whole thing in this. It's called Slate Gray Rust Oleum. But I wanted to try some different chipping techniques for paint. And so. I just put on some liquid latex here. It's masking fluid, as it's called, through that, but that's all it is, is water-soluble liquid latex. Using the tried-and-true sponging technique, I'm going to dab paint on large areas of the entire, well, everything. And you've seen me do this before, so it shouldn't be too much of a surprise. The shiny areas are where the liquid latex are. Now, once the paint dries, it's almost impossible to see them. So how do you get them off? Well, just kind of rub it like that. It chips in a very natural looking way, which I really like. Easy to remove. At first I was using an old toothbrush and I found that my finger did the job better. Here's your black wash to bring some of those you know, brighter blue down, that, that kind of sky blue down to a more muted gray. Some rust effects from Dirty Down, of course. Especially around the rivets and seams where the thing would have been welded and bolted together.
especially places where the paint has been intentionally removed. Really enjoy this dirty down. I'm probably going to get some more of this. But yeah, around all your bolts and now some dry brushing with some metallic silver. Again, cheap craft paint. The cheap craft paint does a great job in making uh, the edges really shine as well as the bolts and whatnot as though this machine or this uh, equipment has definitely seen some wear and tear over the years. You can literally just watch the bolts and the edges begin to catch light. Now let's see the finished product. Here's some catwalks. The transitional column. The stairs. And of course the support beams that hold all of the catwalks up. Just one basic configuration of this whole set. Kind of see everything in action there. Variations. Of course you can make corner pieces if you wanted. I didn't. You can use the catwalks as ramps. And the anti-skid matting actually keeps the characters in place, which is really awesome. Just some various configurations. The stairs are totally usable because of the height that I made them. And of course you can integrate it into your other builds. Like this one. And this one. And if you're really clever, you can make it fit on the walls you've already made. One of the other reasons I put those lower pieces on, it straddled the walls perfectly to allow for overhead three-dimensional integration. And the unused beams can be used as barricades or as uh, extra wall sections. Thank you for watching. Now go have an adventure in crafting.